Hello everyone, this is Darkest Knight from LionBot speaking and in today's video I will be breaking down how to build and use the Blast Furnace in our Wings of Freedom Minecraft mod. Let's get started with building the Blast Furnace. First of all, shout out to user ListoGaming676 who compiled a list of resources required to build the Blast Furnace. It saved me some time for this video, thank you very much. I do have to say though, there's one inaccuracy, instead of 112 bricks you'll need 116 bricks. So, to summarize, you'll require 116 bricks and on top of that, one blast furnace controller, three blast furnace inputs, one output, 36 vertical slabs, eight brick walls, and 12 brick stairs. If we add the bricks required for these special items or special blocks with the 116 bricks required for the rest of the structure, you will get 199 bricks in total, or three stacks and seven bricks. And we can break this down further into 796 clay, or 12 stacks of clay, with an additional 28 clay on top of that. So, once you got all the resources required for crafting the necessary bricks, You'll want to start out with a 5x5 five five brick base. Then you'll choose one of the sides and place a controller in the middle of it. Then, on the side left of the controller, you'll put down the three inputs. On the, side, on the right side of the controller, you'll put down the output. Once you've done that, you'll build up by two rows with bricks again, and you'll add three stairs on each side. From there you can start building up again. The structure is 19 blocks tall overall. You'll also need to make sure that on the inside of the blast furnace this space is uh, the space is 2 blocks high. Then once you've built up the 13 blocks, you'll put down 9 vertical brick slabs on top of the stairs, covering a 3x3 area each. And at the top of the of the blast furnace, you'll make room for, or you'll leave room for two brick walls on each side. And once you've built all of that, you simply have to right click the blast furnace controller. And if you did everything correct, it should pop into this fancy blast furnace model. With your blast furnace set up, you'll now need resources to smelt. There are three resources required for ultra hard steel smelting. Ultra hard steel is currently the only resource you can get with the blast furnace. And to get ultra hard steel, you'll need enriched iron bamboo. How can you get enriched iron bamboo? Well, for that you'll need iron, regular iron bamboo. Regular iron bamboo is necessary for many different items in our mod, for example parts for the 3D maneuver gear or the armors, but we'll cover that in a later video. To find iron bamboo you'll need to go to the mountains and you'll have to look for clean stone, andesite, diorite or granite because these are the only blocks iron bamboo can grow on. If you want to grow your own iron bamboo you, you'll have to place them down on these four blocks I just mentioned and you'll have to make sure that there's iron ore in the ground beneath the iron bamboo. The iron ore has to be in a 5 times 35 times 5 area. But there's a, well, there's a 50% consumption chance. So every time your iron bamboo grows by one block, there's a 50-50 chance that it will use up one of these iron ore blocks in the ground. Overall, iron bamboo can grow between three to five blocks tall and there is a certain chance for iron bamboo enrichment. You'll just have to grow some iron bamboo and wait for it to become enriched. But you can easily you'll be easily 
you'll easily be able to distinguish between enriched iron bamboo and regular iron bamboo by the bluish tint the enriched iron bamboo possesses. Once you've got this enriched iron bamboo, you'll want to head to a village or maybe if you have got a villager kidnapped somewhere, turn him into an armorer, a weaponsmith or a blacksmith. Because with these three kinds of villager, you can trade uh, you can trade the enriched iron bamboo for the so-called secret ingredient. If you level up your villagers, you'll also be able to gain much more secret ingredient out of one iron bamboo. Once you've got your secret ingredient, the next resource you need is coke. Coke is rather simple to attain. You'll just take some coal and smelt it in a furnace. There have been some complaints about this recipe and I can see why because there are some mods that use a similar recipe or actually the same recipe for their items. So we'll look into uh, creating diff uh, an, at least one other method to attain coke. But right now you can only get it by smelting your coal in a furnace. Once you have your coke, the last thing that's needed is iron ore. And you all know where you can find iron ore. So with your iron ore, your coke and your secret ingredient ready, you will be heading towards the inputs of your blast furnace. There you'll have to figure out which input is for which resource. It actually should show you I, if you crouch or by default. When I recorded this uh, gameplay, there seemed to be some issue with the version I was using. We'll look into it. Yeah, uh, you'll simply fill your resources into the input by right clicking the input with the required resource. And once you've got all the, uh, like once you've got at least one of each, you'll be able to uh, turn on the blast furnace. To activate the blast furnace, you'll need a flint and steel and then right click the controller with it. Then this swell little holo GUI should pop up and it tells you a plethora of things. First of all, it tells you the temperature. The threshold for smelting is 500 degrees Celsius. You can go into the config to change it to Fahrenheit and Kelvin. But yeah, uh, the blast furnace needs to get to 500 degrees before it starts actually smelting anything. Then you have this green tick. This just shows you that you are currently able to smelt something. If you aren't, it will turn into a red cross or a red X. And then you'll also ha then you also have this little ingot here. And once the smelting starts, you'll see that this ingots, ing ingot starts filling up. This indicates your smelting progress. And actually, the hotter your blast furnace gets, the faster the smelting will be. So it's advised to keep it running for a long time so that it can build up heat instead of just always restarting it because then you'll lose a lot of time because it always has to reach 500 degrees first and then it starts building up etc. Once the ingot is completely filled up, indicating that one ingot of, iron, uh, of ultra hard steel has been successfully smolten, you'll go to the output where you can see the quantity of ultra hard steel in it and just crouch while right clicking on it to take it out. By the same method you can also take out the resources of the input. And with that, you've got your first ultra hard steel ingot, one of many, hopefully. And what ultra hard steel is needed for will be covered in an upcoming video. And a little hint, it's for 3D manuigate crafting. Thank you for watching. See you next time.